Section 80 of the Expedition of Humphrey Clinker. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett. Section 80. To Mrs. Mary Jones at Brambleton Hall. Oh, Mary Jones! Mary Jones! I have met with so many accidents, surprisals, and terrifications, that I am in a pathic fantigo, and I believe I shall never be my own self again. Last week I was dragged out of a river like a drowned rat, and lost a brand new nightcap with a sulphur stay-hook that cost me a good half a crown, and an odd shoe of green gala monkey, besides wetting my clothes and tearing my smock, and an ugly gash made in the back part of my thigh, by the stump of a tree. To be sure, Mr. Clinker tuck me out of the cocks, but he left me on my back in the water to go to the squire, and I might have had a watery grave if a millar had not brought me to the dry land. But, oh, what choppings and changes, girl! The player man that came after Miss Liddy, and frightened me with a beard at Bristol Well, is now Matthew Murphyed into a fine young gentleman son and heir of squire dollison we are all together in the same house and all parties have agreed to the match and in a fortnight the ceremony will be performed but this is not the only wedding we are to have mistress is resolved to have the same frolic in the name of god last sunday in the parish crutch if my own ours may be trusted the clerk called the banes of marriage betwixt openia lesha mehago and Tabitha Bramble, spinster. He might as well have called her Inkle Weaver, for she never spun an hank of yarn in her life. Young Squire Dollison and Miss Liddy make the second kipple, and there might have been a turd, but times are changed with Mr. Clinker. Oh, Molly, what dost think? Mr. Clinker is found to be a pieblow of our own squire, and his right name is Mr. Matthew Lloyd, though of God he knows how that can be and he is now out of livery and wears ruffles. But I knew him when he was out at elbows, and had not a rag to kiver his pistorer's. So he need not hold his head so high. He is for sartain very humble and complaisant, and protests as how he has the same regard as before, but that he is no longer his own master, and cannot pretend to marry without the squire's consent. He says he must wait with patience, and trust to providence and such nonsense. But if so be as how his regard is the same, why stand shilly-shally? Why not strike while the iron is hot, and speak to the squire without loss of time? What subjection can the squire make to our coming together? Though if my father wasn't a gentleman, my mother was an honest woman. I didn't come on the wrong side of the blanket, girl. My parents were married according to the right of Holy Mother Crutch, in the face of men and angles. Mark that, Mary Jones. Mr. Clinker, Lloyd, I would say, had best look to his tackle. There be other chaps in the market, as the saying is. What would he say if I should accept the suit and service of the young squire's valley? Mr. Machappy is a gentleman born, and has been abroad in the wars. He has a world of buck learning, and speaks French, and ditch, and scotch, and all manner of outlandish lingos. To be sure, he's a little the worse for the wear, and is much given to drink. But then he's good-tempered in his liquor, and a prudent woman might wind him about her finger. But I have no thoughts of him, I'll assure you. I scorn for to do, or to say, or to think anything that might give unbreach to Mr. Lloyd, without further occasion. But then I have such vapours, Molly, I sit and cry by myself, and take ass of etida, and smill to burned fathers, and kindle snuffs. And I pray constantly for Greece, that I may have a glimpse of the new light, to show me the way through this wretched veil of tears. And yet I want for nothing in this family of love, where every soul is so kind and so courteous, that one would think they are so many saints in haven. Dear Molly, I recommend myself to your prayers, being with my service to Saul, your ever-loving and discounseled friend, Win Jenkins, October 14. End of section 80. Recording by Tricia G.